हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू आवर चैनल उल्लास कुमार गोखले फॉर लर्निंग इंटरनेट ऑफ थिंग्स द टॉपिक फॉर टुडे इज वेब एप्लीकेशन मैसेजिंग प्रोटोकॉल वैम्प बेसिकली वैम्प इज नथिंग बट स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड वे टू सेंड मैसेजेस बिटवीन डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड एप्लीकेशन लेट स्टार्ट विद द एजेंडा फर्स्ट विल डिस्कस द बैकग्राउंड वाई we need the wap then second we'll discuss the modern application architecture and problems associated with them then next we'll see what is wap and why it was developed then we'll have a brief introduction to the wap then we'll go into the details of the remote procedure call rpc and publish subscribe pop sub messaging then we'll see the terms stations and transport that is nothing but the architecture of wap then we'll discuss the peers and roles in wmp then we'll discuss the application code then we'll have a discussion on transport and station lifetime and lastly we'll discuss the summary so let us start with the background Now the objective of traditional web application was to serve static documents. So to update the content displayed by those web applications, a browser refresh was needed. That was the traditional way. Every time we have to refresh the browser for getting the updates. Then such approach falls short of requirements of modern applications of serving dynamic content. nowadays we have the dynamic content so the modern applications they are serving the dynamic content so this approach will not be possible so that's why we can't expect the users to initiate a refresh every time it is updated and therefore applications need to autonomously pull update so automatically they should pull the updates without refresh so this is where web application messaging protocol wam comes into picture so this is the background why the wam was developed then let us go to the modern application architecture and their problem so modern applications are architecture as separate small components that simplify development and maintenance so uh, all the components they are independently working then the different components need to communicate with each other so there are two commonly used patterns for web application messaging the first is the publish subscribe and the second is the remote procedure calls rpc now an architecture that supports both pub sub and rpc would require two servers hosting two technology stacks that may not be compatible so the application building blocks would thereby need to connect to each service thus requiring separate connection for each protocol so if you have two protocols then we'll need uh, two connections for that so application requirement such as authentication authorization that will again require separate apis so that will increase the application complexity so in order to solve this problem the web application messaging protocol was developed as a solution to the problem of integrating pub sub and rpc so we are combining these two protocols here so the design objective of wam were to provide high performance safety and easy implementation and wam solves the integration problem by separating the communication components so this is done with the help of router so the separation happens through routing messages thereby eliminating the need of components to identify other components then let us go to the wamp introduction so the wamp or the web application messaging protocol is a communication protocol that enables distributed application architectures with application functionality spread across nodes and all application communication decoupled by messages routed via dedicated wamp routers that means the decoupling is done with the help of 
routers. So the different components which are present, they are separated with the help of the routers. And that is how uh, the WAMP enables the say, communication in a distributed application environment. Then at its core, WAMP provides application with two asynchronous messaging patterns within one unified protocol. So the two patterns are publish, subscribe and the remote procedure calls. So these are combined in the WAMP. Now let us see the details of remote procedure calls. Remote procedure call is a messaging pattern involving peers having three roles, caller, dealer and callee. So here the callee registers procedure with application code to call remotely from callers. So callers will call the procedure and callee will give the results. So here the procedures are having unique resource identities. So that is called as the procedure URIs. So with the help of this procedure URIs, the procedures are identified. Callee registers these procedures with the application code. So they are called by the callers. So the caller issues a call to remote procedures by providing the procedure URI and any arguments for that call. And the dealer will perform the routing of the calls and the results between caller and callee. So the calls will be given by the caller and the results will be given by the callee. So this is how the remote procedure call RPC will work. Then let us go to the publish subscribe or pop sub. Now in this case, it is a messaging pattern involving peers again has the three roles, publisher, broker and subscriber. Here we have broker, publisher and subscriber. So a subscriber subscribes to topics under application defined. So again, it will have the unique URIs called as the topic URIs. And this will be received by the subscriber from the publisher. So publisher will publish such topics and the subscriber will receive them and broker will perform the routing of the events from publisher to subscriber. Then let us go to the realms and session and transport. Here a realm is a WAMP routing and administrative domain protected by authentication and authorization. So this realm will have the transport and the session. A session is nothing but a transient conversation between two peers attached to a Realm and running over a transport. So the session will run over the transport and transport it connects to WAMP peers and provides a channel over which the WAMP messages for WAMP session can flow in both directions. So the protocol is bidirectional, that's why the message will flow in both the directions. So here WAMP can run over different transports and we have a transport suitable for WAM. it will have some characteristics that is it is message based bidirectional reliable and order and the default transport for WAMP is WebSocket that's why we call this protocol as the sub protocol of WebSocket so uh, WAM is officially registered sub protocol of WebSocket then WAMP is currently defined for the serialization JSON and MSG pack. So these two serializations will be used along with the WAMP. Now when transport allows for as the case with the WAP socket, WAMP lets you to combine the transport with any serialization. We can use uh, either JSON or the message pack. Then let us go to the architecture. Uh, here you can see, we just take the laser pointer. So here we have the client and the router. So these two are the peers. And the client, it will have different roles as a caller, callee, 
publisher and subscriber whereas the router it will have two roles dealer and broker it will support these two roles this is the realm so uh, it is the transport for which this session will run so the session will have the messages from the client to the router so in this way the architecture will support the different roles played by the client and the router let us go to the different roles so peers and roles so a wam session connects two peers that is client and the router as we have just now seen then each wam peer can implement one or more roles as we have seen the client can implement any combination of the roles callee caller publisher and subscriber these are the four uh, possibilities for the client similarly a uh, router can implement either the dealer or the broker role now let us see the remote procedure call roles the remote procedure call messaging pattern it will involve peers of three different roles callee caller and dealer callee and caller they are the clients and the dealer is the router so here the caller issues call to remote procedure by providing the uh, procedure uri that is unique resource identifier and any arguments for the call so the callee will execute the procedure using the supplied argument to the call and return the result of the call to the caller so this will be routed uh, through the router callee registers procedure they provide with the dealers so here the dealer or the router they will be the playing the uh, role of the middleman so callee registers the procedure with the dealers and the caller initiate procedure calls first to the dealers and then they will be routed to the uh, incoming calls from the callers will be routed to the callee implementing the procedure calls and route the call results back from callee to the callers so dealers will be uh, acting as a middleman which will send the results back to the callers from the callee so in this way the remote procedure call will play the roles the caller and callee will easily run application code while the dealer works as a generic router for remote procedure calls decoupling callers and callee so uh, in that case the dealer or the router will not have the application the application code will be running only on the caller and callee then let us go to the next that is the publish and subscribe roles so again the publish subscribe messaging pattern involves uh, three different roles subscriber publisher and broker again here subscriber and publisher they are the clients and the broker is the router then a publisher publishes events to topics by providing the topic uri and any payload for the event it will be always the publisher will be publishing the topics and the subscribers of the topic will receive the event together with the event pay payload so first the subscriber has to subscribe for the particular topic then only it will receive the topic then subscribe subscribe to the topics they are interested with the brokers so this will be done with the brokers and publisher will initiate the publication first at the broker and then brokers will route events incoming from publishers to the subscriber that are subscribed to the respective topics so in this way the publish subscribe will play the roles and here again the publisher and subscriber will run the application code while the broker which is a generic router will be used for decoupling the publisher from the subscriber so this decoupling is used in both the cases publish subscribe as well as in the remote procedure calls then the application the application code 
here the is designed to run inside the clients that is the peers of the rows callee caller publisher and subscriber whereas the routers that is the peers of the rows broker and dealers they are responsible for generic call and event routing and do not run the application so this allows transparency exchange broker and dealer implementations without affecting the application and to distribute and deploy application component exit that's why uh, wam it is a very flexible protocol so let us see the transport and session lifetime here as you can see uh, this is the sequence diagram which is showing the relation between lifetime of web socket transport and wam session now first the uh, ecp is established transmission control protocol is established and then we have the tls that is the transport layer security once that is established then the wam transport lifetime starts with the establishment of the web socket and then the wam session established with the help of the session and the messaging will be done during the session and once the messages are exchanged the wam will be closed and then we can also have another session where again the wam will be established and the messages will be exchanged and then finally the wam will be closed once the sessions are over then we close the web socket thereby the transport lifetime will end and after that we close the transport layer security and the transmission control protocol so in this way the session will end then next we have the summary so in this tutorial we have introduced limitations of traditional static applications and modern dynamic application and then uh, the problem of communication between different component was introduced and the communication solution offered by integration of the pub sub that is publisher subscriber and the remote procedure call into wam using real time transport protocol that is the web socket was discussed and this allows wam to be used for the entire messaging requirements of components and microservices based applications reducing technology stack complexity so here the only one protocol will sufficient and uh, it is capable and secure fundament for the application to rely on so that's why this is commonly used in the iot application so with this we come to the end of this video if you have any questions you can contact me on facebook then twitter gmail or instagram now this is part one which we have covered and we'll be covering the second part of this it will be the auto ban wham auto ban so let us see how we'll be doing it in the next video then if you like the video press the like button share with your friends and subscribe to our channel ullas kumar Kukli. and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notifications for the future videos on the internet of things and thanks for watching have a nice day